Mark Cuban is one of the main investors on Shark Tank and is the owner of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks. He went from selling garbage bags door to door at age 12 to then getting fired from his job for closing a huge deal instead of opening a store on time to betting on himself, becoming his own boss and now being worth $3.9 billion. Need motivation? Watch Top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine to the nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Mark Cuban and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, be persistent. When I got to Dallas, I was a bartender at night and I moved in, one of my buddies from Indiana said, you gotta come to Dallas. And I'm like, I'm there. You know, my car would only get so far. It had a Fiat X19 with a hole in the floorboard that guzzled oil every 60 miles. And I went down there and there's a place called The Village. It's the world's, was the world's largest apartment complex. We had six guys in a three bedroom apartment. I didn't have my own room. I didn't have my own drawer. I didn't have my closet. I had a pile and I had one ratty towel that I stole from um, Motel 6. Um, and that was it. And so I was looking for my career, got a job at a software store. And I was, you know, I was, didn't have a tech background, so I was teaching myself all this. Because the way I look at tech is somebody invents it, and everybody else is tied for second place in the ability to learn it. And if, if I work harder and faster to really dive in, even if it means reading the manual, you know, just di diving in, then I can get a head start. How and old I can were have, you during this? I was this? 24. And so sleeping on the floor, working in a software company, you know, learning, 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 getting better at what I was doing. And then one day, because I was dying to get out of that rat hole that I lived in, um, I had a chance to go out and close a sale for, that would have got me a $1,500 commission. And so I went to my boss, his name is Michael Humecki, and I said, boss, one of my uh, responsibilities was to sweep the floor, wipe down the windows, and open the door to open the store. I got the sale, you gotta let me close the sale. He goes, no. You gotta be in there to open the store. And I'm like, Michael, you, I mean, no. So I made the executive decision to go out, pick up the check, thinking if I hand this guy a $15,000 check, of course he's gonna change his mind. Fired me on the spot. And so here I was, living in a sh oh, excuse my French, you know, just this ratty place with a Motel 6 towel, sorry, Motel 6, um, <laughs> and, and really didn't know how I was gonna get out, but I went to, I decided, okay, I'm a lousy employee. I went to um, one of the companies that I had been talking to, Architectural Lighting, and I said, look, um, I need $500 to be able to buy the software you want, and I promise you that even if it doesn't work, I will wash your car, you know, I will walk your dog, I don't care what it is, I will do whatever it takes to make it up to you. And they gave me the $500, and that allowed me to create micro solutions. And you know, six months later, I was out of the rat hole, and my company turned into a real company, and that's the one I sold um, for $6 million when I was 29, 30 years old. Rule number two, love the grind. I describe myself as a grinder. Um, you know, I just, like we talked about learning, that's a grind, but I love it, you know? And I just, I think I've just learned what I'm good at and learn to focus on those things and, and try to you know, utilize those, those skills to now you know, not just be an entrepreneur, but probably more often now invest in and help other entrepreneurs. Rule number three, do what you love. I get that question all the time. So okay. what industry should I look at? I can, tell, I can tell you all about artificial intelligence, computer vision, personalized medicine, but then what, right? And so, the, and maybe you, you're an expert in one of those fields and you can go for it. But what I, I tend to try to tell people in terms of what does it take to be successful? Find something you, you love to do and then be great at it. Not average, not marginal, not good enough. But if you can be great at it, be great at it. If you are the, the greatest videographer in the history of videographers, people aren't, don't care about cell phones. What is it that you can do that makes them know that what you, the way you do it is special. And if you can do that and convey it, then you'll be fine. If you're not sure, then you know, 
you've got to, you've got to decide whether you want to stay on your own, get you know, be a contractor or go work for somebody. You know, it, it just depends. You know, and let me add one other thing. I, I crushed myself, um, and like my brothers didn't. They they took a completely different path, and they were looking just nine to five at yada yada. Not everybody's got to be an entrepreneur, and so if you if you've got it in your blood and that's what you want to do, then find a way to be great. And if not, you know you'll figure it out. You'll find something else. Rule number four: hustle. I started my first business when I was 12. I was buying and selling um, baseball cards, buying and selling stamps, anything I could do to make money, I, I was hustling and trying to do. So I was into business, but I, I, not so much where it was, all my friends were into it with me, so they wouldn't know. And baseball so, cards. Yeah, baseball cards, you name it. I mean, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and so I would, probably even less than 12 years old, I would, excuse me, go out and buy a bunch of baseball cards that I collected, and I would package, I would say, okay, you're guaranteed to have a Pittsburgh Pirate in this package, and I would charge three times as much, and I'd set up on this park bench down in the park down in Scott Township where I grew up, and um, I'd have these little sales, and it was great. I made money, and I, I mean, it was, you know, and I, I learned as much about business when I was nine, 10, and 12 as I, I learned any other time. Also, if you wanna have more confidence, self-love, and learn from billionaires, check out my 254 series where every day I send you an unlisted video via email to boost your confidence. It's free. The link to join up is in the description below. I've always been passionate. Some people thought, you know, it's, a, it's more OCD than anything else. I always did everything back ass half words. You know, I, I, I like to, to challenge myself. When I talk to entrepreneurs, you have to make a decision what's important to you. Rule number five, understand technology. There's nothing that AI won't impact. As big as the, so been, having been around a while, I saw the impact of PCs, then I saw the impact of local area networks, then I saw the impact of wide area networks, then I saw the impact of the internet, then I saw the impact of mobile, then I saw the impact of wireless. You know, now I'm seeing the impact of, of artificial intelligence and it dwarfs any of those things. And if I don't understand how to apply it to my businesses, I mean, I remember selling PCs and software and walking in saying, you don't need to use that pen and paper on, on, a, you know, on a notepad or a ledger pad. Now we're gonna give you a spreadsheet, and by the way, here's a, here's a spreadsheet that costs $495, and I had to pay to go get trained on how to sell it, which is crazy now when you think about it. But then we said, okay, now you can play what if. Then we said you can connect these PCs. Unless I understood the technology, how was I going to explain it? How was I going to understand it? Unless I understand it now, how am I going to invest in it? You right. know, then I got to go trust somebody who says, oh yeah, I know AI and maybe they do, maybe they don't. And it's really easy just to have, just to, okay, say so you figure it out. That's just not my style. So you're building a base of knowledge and then you think that at some point it's going to pay dividends in terms of- It already of, has. Right? I mean, if, if you truly believe AI is going to change everything, how are you going to understand what people are doing to change everything unless you at least have a, a foundational understanding of it. Now, I'm not going to build a million layer neural network and try to change the world. I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to write a research paper and saying, here's how, why the lottery ticket approach works and you can build smaller neural networks with less data um, and be more, you know, um, resource efficient. But I can read that stuff and understand that when somebody says, okay, we're building this project and we need this size data set or this size data set, or we need this amount of resources, I can ask questions and understand the answers. Rule number six, expose yourself to new things. The same thing I told myself, the same thing I tell everybody. One, you're 21, 22, 23 years old, right? You don't have to figure it out right now. Don't try, right? You spend all this money, sorry, um, <laughs> paying to learn. Now it's your chance to get paid to learn. You don't need the perfect job. You just need to go somewhere where you'll learn and start to be exposed to different ideas. And now it's not like, you know, when, when Greg 40 years ago was graduating. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And wow. me five years ago. Um, <laughs> you know, it was like, get a career. And you right. know, the pressure was, get a career, go work for IBM or General Motors and get a pension. Those days are gone. People can't even pay their pensions anymore. And so you're a free agent. And you're always gonna be a free agent on the market. You guys are the Kevin Durants and LeBron James, you know, where you're always out there and can go find a better situation for yourself. Do what's best for you. What have you got to lose? Like when I started my company, you know, after I got fired by Michael Umecki, um, <laughs> um, 
you know, what was good? how bad could it be? I would lose my Motel 6 towel, you know? <laughs> it was just like, what have you got to lose? And yeah, I understand there's pressure from student loans and there's a lot of conversations we can have there, right? But, you know, you can get a job that doesn't have to be perfect. You can learn at that job and you guys have the pedigree, you have the brains, you have the initiative to go out and try the next job, you know? You know, the good news is the economy is good enough that it may not be perfect, but you can go job to job. Don't look for the perfect answer. Just look to get the experience. Look to learn. Because all these different exposures, all the different things you learn, learning how to learn, that's what's going to give you, get you excited and juice you for, for something that you love. Because once you find something you love to do, that's when the magic happens. Because when you're, when you're able to find something you love to do, then you can start work, focusing on, how can I be great at this? And like Greg found out he was a great networker. I like to you know, play with technology and try to do things first. You know, whatever it is that you find about yourself, then you can try to be great at it. And it's rare when people quit things they're great at. You know? And so trying those things, so that, that's how I advise people. Don't, don't stress, just go out and try different things. Rule number seven, understand scaling. There's a Shark Tank company from last season called Mush, right? Cool stuff, it's like this, um, um, oatmeal that they packaged, it's fresh dried oatmeal that they packaged with a little spoon and you, it has to be refrigerated but you just grab it and go. And the, the response was great from the show and now, like I just saw their numbers, they went from 50,000 in sales to 100,000 to 125,000 in three straight months. It's not scale but they're growing, right? And they all of a sudden are like, okay, we gotta go raise money and we gotta do yada, 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 right? Scale is hard not just because of the economic cost, but also because of the people cost and the mind share cost. It's hard when you're dealing with a major company, and in particular if you're dealing with a big company like a Walmart or Costco or whatever, because you only get one shot at those guys. And so like I told Mush with Whole Foods, they're interested, I'm like, you're not ready. You're not ready. You have got to, you gotta crawl before you ball, you know? and. It, and, and, and so I told him it's going to be painful not to go after that big customer, but think about what happens if you go after it and A, it's going to take capital you don't have and you're going to borrow it, or B, it doesn't work out and they return it all. Then all of a sudden you're out of business. And so you're, you're right that you need capital to scale, but you also need the confidence that you can scale and that you can keep your customers happy. And so I, I always tell people, get to the point where you have, you've, you've taken care of the customers that you can take care of. Once you can demonstrate that, then you can get smart money and you're talking from a position of power. And then you can go to the Walmarts of the world, the Costcos, and you may not even have to raise money. They may even provide PO leverage or PO support or connect you with a bank that does. And so, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is don't get too far ahead of yourself because sometimes sales can be a lot more expensive than you think they are, and you've got to be careful. I've seen several of my Shark Tank companies try to get too big too fast, and it almost put them out of business. Rule number eight, put in the time. You almost have to have that drive. Like, in other words, you can't fake it. You can't, no. like, pretend that you want to read about Ted Turner and, okay, I'll skip one movie. Well, it has to I be mean, in you your, can, your soul. Yeah, I mean, you can fake it, too. You make it in a lot of areas, yeah. particularly if you're working for somebody else. But at the end of the day, um, if you're going to be great at something, you've got to make the effort to be great at something, um, whether it's sports, whether it's physics, math, science, business, whatever it may be. You know, it's not just a natural skill. You've got, you've got to, to learn, and particularly if you're in the technology industry, because it changes every day. You know, when I got started, and, and you know, after I got, I, I got a, was a bartender when I first came to Dallas, got into the PC industry, got fired, started my own company, but there, I learned early on that there was always something new, and most people didn't put in the time to learn it. It's like now with artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about machine learning and neural networks. Not a lot of people are putting in the time to take classes or do the tutorials or to, to learn how to apply it to business. And that's what it takes. And, and you know that's just something I've always enjoyed. So that I've been fortunate at that. Rule number nine, create change. 
What industry do you think still requires a lot of innovation? All of them. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, look, one of my dad's favorite sayings was, you don't live in the world you were born into. Everything changes all the time. And you know what's better than change? Creating change. And so whenever I see something that's done the way it's always been done, you know, like when I got to the MBA, you know, my whole goal is just to F things up, right? Because they, everything was done the exact same way. They thought they were in the business of basketball. For 50 years, they thought they were in the basketball business. No. You, when you go to a basketball game, you don't remember the jump shots, the dunks. You remember who you were with, the fun you had. It's one of the few industries where that ball is in the air at the end of a game. Everybody holds their breath. And you're, if it goes in, you're hugging people you've never seen before. You, you know, so you can take any industry and look at the way things have been done and try to come up and innovate. And, you know, and like I said, with just the nature of capitalism right now and all the changes that are required, every industry needs change. And there's a, a unique opportunity that I don't think any generation's ever seen. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. Do you own any FUBU shirts? No. Why not? I threw them away. <laughs> I used to. You once said you try to read about three hours every day. Yes. That's a lot of books. Wouldn't you say? Yes. I've written five books. Have you read any of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> I promoted them, but never read. Why not? Next. <laughs> <laughs> what about Lori Grenier's book, Invent It, Sell It, Bank It? Did you read that? She wrote a book. <laughs> What about Robert Herzebeck's book, Driven? Robert can write? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever read the Fifty Shades of Grey series? No, but fun fact, there's a picture of me in the first movie. Really? For real. Telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, if you're still here, you're watching and you commit, you promise to take action after watching this video. We don't just watch videos, we do something afterwards. Give me a hashtag, believe in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. When you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition. You know, unless you're just extremely lucky. And if there's gonna be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're gonna lose. And, but most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've gotta put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing, otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass. If you want 10 more rules from Mark Cuban, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. If you introduce compassion, and you look at the needs of the people that work for you right from the beginning, I think you're gonna have stronger companies, less turnover, and better results.